if it doesn't have a genuine connection to COVID and you don't have a genuine authentic reason to be speaking about it, then you should merely produce things that are um, empathy centered. everyone. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Wherever you are in this world, we hope that you're staying healthy, that you're safe, you, your families, and your friends. And we're here for you. So Women Worldwide, every single week, will continue to deliver the guests, the advice, the insights, the hope, the inspiration, because these are certainly unprecedented and challenging times. And that's actually where we get to the topic of today's show. There is a thread that moves through everything we do in, in life and in business, and that's communication. Communication can help, it can lift, it can be giving, it can be meaningful, or not. <laughs> so it's really important that as we're communicating, it's effective. And I ask you, are, are you being effective in your communication? How are you helping and being a meaningful resource? And that's actually uh, where my special guest comes in today. Joining me on the show is Tracy Mendelson. She is a marketing communication, brand management, and business strategies. She is also a principal at Human Impact Solutions. Tracy is also the president of the Black Public Relations Society of New York. And I am so happy to have her on this show. Tracy, welcome. I think I had you on mute. Let's see if we can. Uh, there, there we go. go. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Well, it's exciting to be here. Um, it's exciting to see you again. I know. And, Tracy, it's uh, been two years since Patrice's luncheon in New no, York City? One year. One year. One year. Oh, I feel one like year. it's... Okay. Wow. A lot say, has happened. <laughs> yes. So much has happened. Wait a minute. You may be right. I, I don't know. I just feel like it's long overdue. I'm yes. really happy to be talking about effective communication with you, somebody mm -hmm. who has been in the industry for years. But I, I want to start off um, to ask you... First off, how are you, of course? I'm doing and well, thank you. Good. And yeah. how did you decide to choose a career path of marketing, communication, brand management, business strategy? Well, there was a bit of serendipity involved. I was actually a uh, communications major, and my mother was an entertainer, and I acted and sang and danced all through school and stuff like that. And I think... And I was really tall all through school, but I haven't grown since junior high, so they thought I was going to be this tall model person or whatever. And the compromise, because I wasn't interested in performing anymore, I did. I was a child model. Anyway, the compromise was that I, I would pursue broadcast journalism. And honestly, what happened was I got an internship in the PR department of an ad agency, and I found out I really liked making things happen behind the scenes. And um, I got, I was the youngest person in the company to ever get offered an account executive position. That kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> people got fired and they're like, hey, you. And, yeah. um, and then I transitioned into marketing because there again, um, I liked being able to quantify results in real time and so I also realized you know I could work in any number of industries that interested me so it started out with entertainment and I've also done finance and and I do a great deal of uh, work around progressive issues and nonprofit and I've, I've done Broadway and off-Broadway and jazz so it's been a I had a student ask me recently has my career met my expectations? And I said, I don't know that I had monetary expectations, but 
it's exceeded my expectations in terms of the experience and and the people I've gotten to meet and the things I've gotten to do. Well, the experience of the people that is such a big part of keeping us <laughs> yeah <laughs> with our purpose i mean i find the same thing i also love that it's almost like your career found you and it progressed from there and all the different industries that you've been in what can you share maybe with the women worldwide audience because we're all thinking about what's the best way to communicate now whether it's with our customers, our employees, any of our stakeholders? I think um, the first thing that comes to mind is authentically. Um, I think that you really can't look to, well, there's a lot of communication going on and little being said um, from different brands because people are parroting one another and using the information that we have that's official and and you know giving the access to resources that we have we decided i mean so you asked me what the best advice is yeah the best advice being authentic and realizing that right now this is what matters this is what's important and anything that you pitch um, if it doesn't have a genuine connection to COVID and you don't have a genuine authentic reason to be speaking about it, then you should merely produce things that are um, empathy centered. Um, and uh, Richard Edelman of Edelman Public Relations um, did a, uh, a, a podcast recently, an interview, and they've published a study. Um, they conducted a study. I don't know if they've published it yet, but he was mentioning some of the highlights. And one of the things that stuck with me was he said that what they learned was um, consumers are going to care about who they heard from during this time, whether they were part of the solution or they expressed concern. They're also going to care about um, our research has shown that, that they're going to care about how they treated their workers in the crisis. And um, so I think that those things are really important. Whether If you're a person who runs your own shop like I do with my business partner, Janet Dickerson, um, um, that's important. But it's also important how you counsel your clients. Um, and I think very often, uh, it may be like lawyers, um, you know, they say any lawyer who represents himself has a fool as a client. I, I think sometimes PR firms need counsel in how to handle their internal um, things. And, um, you know, letting people go without getting through one pay period and uh, that kind of thing. That's, those are some of the things that have happened. And I think that, you know, other companies um, have the executives, top tier executives have taken pay cuts and, uh, so they can help protect their workforce. Right. And obviously some companies are in a position to do that and others are not. And I think that to find the best way, um, if you have to make those tough decisions, to do it humanely. Mm -hmm. um, and with a, a comp, especially with young people who may have moved to New York for the job or, you know, whatever, and cutting people off at the knees with no severance, it's just not a, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's not good. No, not at all. I mean, and there's been a lot of that. There's been some of that. And, and I was talking with some colleagues and there will probably be more of that. Right. You know, as we yeah. Talk. I think you're speaking to, you know, when you talk about the authenticity, it also speaks to the transparency, but this need for the empathy and the emotional intelligence that goes along with delivering the facts, which sometimes are hard to, to take. And, you know, um, I think 
you said something that was really interesting about the companies that will be remembered um, because those that whether they are directly related or they showed some kind of compassion and I do agree with that I, I also think with the communication um, it's best like you said if if you're not if you don't have anything to say directly related now is not the time to be pitching um, but where can you help any any company any professional can give and, and can lift. So you, you made some really good key points. Is the Richard Edelman study, is that the trust barometer study that they do every year or is that a different study? You know, I'm not sure because I came in um, after the beginning of the podcast and they were just talking about it. So it could be the annual study yeah. um, that he was reporting on. But I got the feeling that it was specific to corona. Interesting. Or perhaps it coincided. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm definitely going to check that study out. Um, and you know what? I'm actually going to ask you to hold your thoughts for just oh. a minute. We're going to shift our focus over to the sponsor of today's episode, which is Routledge Publishing. And Routledge is one of the leading publishers of textbooks and academic journals. And they're also the publisher, Tracy, of my book. <laughs> Answers from Modern Communicators. And Tracy, I'm sure I've shared this with you, but it's a, it's a book that answers over 150 questions oh all goodness. around reputation, relationship building, social media, public relations. Um, and I thought it would be fun. <laughs> no, you, let's do it. I'm mad that I haven't ordered it yet, and I, oh. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Um, maybe you could answer one of the questions that I've already answered. Uh, your question is number 57. And I'm okay. going to apply it to the time that we're in now. So okay. how do you maintain your networking in these challenging times? Okay. You want me to answer it now? Yes, if you would. Okay. Um, so as president of the Black Public Relations Society, I'm very concerned that our membership have the tools they need and have the sense of community and the power of connection. And um, so we do that by, you know, very grassroots reach outreach. Um, and we're looking at the, the virtual events to do. And the reason we haven't rushed to do something is because I don't think online happy hours and you know side hustle things are what we want to be about um only you know that's real we want to give people real tools and mechanisms and everything and there are people even thinking about switching careers at this point and you know looking at industries that might be less volatile and um i don't know what industry that is but um um so you, you do that and you create platforms for people to engage on. Uh, with our client, in my, in my role as a principal at a, at a, at a firm, um, we, we, on behalf of our clients, you know, stay in touch. For instance, I had book clients uh, with book tours set up, travel and events, done, gone. Done. Um, same with a film client who, you know, um, is, uh, has a prominent space in the Tribeca Film Festival, poof, gone. Although there is some, you know, online stuff being done. So we obviously, um, you know, look to those constituencies. We stay in touch with our colleagues who are parts of networks that we want to continue to work with um, and continue to be to partner with. And we offer services if, if, if uh, you know, we offer what can I help you with? We have these resources or that. Um, and I think that that's the way you do it. It's like staying in touch with the people in your life. Absolutely. Thank you so much for answering that question. And mm -hmm. thank you, Rutledge, did I for putting in my book. Yes, you <laughs> did. That was a great answer. <laughs> and thank you to Rutledge for uh, sponsoring for this sure. episode. So Tracy, let's jump back into our discussion. Uh, now you just mentioned, you know, your organization, the Black Public Relations Society of New York, 
And, you know, maybe you could share some of the challenges, whether it's communicating with this organization or with your client or, or any challenges that you feel like you're facing right now and, and how you approach a challenge. Well, we're a professional organization that um, membership based and we're there to provide support and, and resources where I like to call us a knowledge um, resource and opportunity network. So companies come to us when they're looking for diverse hires and our job is to make them understand that our constituents are as qualified as any other. And when they come to us and say, we can't find diverse candidates who are qualified, I say, well, you're not casting the right net, a, a wide enough net, and you're not casting it in the right places. So um, I think that, you know, and we're diversity, equity, and inclusion advocates. So, um, one of the things that happens is that in a situation like this, um, you know, when when you are you have a company that has a newly instituted DE and I um, um, initiative, so some of the people hired within those initiatives are the first to be laid off in a situation like this, and you know that's all unfortunate. So. There's a sustainability factor um, there. Um, so we want to help people um, through that transition, whether it's, you know, continuing. Because people are still putting out information for jobs. I mean, you know, um, some, some companies are, and some sure. companies have a hiring freeze. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we're, we're working with everybody. We're small enough at this point to work at, with everyone on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, so there are some different concerns. I mean, some people have been directly impacted by the virus. Um, some people have been laid off. Um, some people were in the midst of beginning a job search and, you know, don't know quite, you know, they're betwixt and between. Um, and there's, I think that, for everyone right now, you know, it's an opportunity to um, elevate your skills, um, focus on what you really want to do. Um, a lot of people are unhappy in their jobs. I mean, that's just true of all industries. And when I talk to people, you know, about, you know, a given corporate culture they may be in and they're unhappy, and I just try to say, listen, you know, um, most culprit cultures have their idiosyncrasies that are, you know, not, not, I mean, you and I have probably experienced and it's why we have our own businesses. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> Just a bit. And so I have a lot of empathy for that. Everybody isn't made to be an entrepreneur. And, um, you know, some people absolutely need to have that stable, situation and I think that you know the work world doesn't promise what it used to promise that you could retire after 20 30 years and, right but it is uh, so important I mean even just for your your health for your mind to be in a, a culture to be in a place that kind of aligns with who you are and if you are at odds with a corporate culture and granted no one wants to go through these uncertain times I think what you're speaking to is the self-discovery and reflection that can happen that might allow somebody to move in a different direction, especially when everything goes back to whether it's normal or a new normal. Yeah, I mean, for our members, obviously, we're, we're engaged in trying to diversify the workforce business profession and its related disciplines. Um, and um, you know there are in there are structural cultural aspects of agencies where people do not feel included do not have equity people don't understand what we mean by equity sometimes they think it means they want a share of the company it means that they want a fair opportunity to right. 
balance. To be seen to, equally. Yes, and to be heard and to contribute. People mm -hmm. want to contribute and they want to compete. And um, so very often I have to tell people two things. It's not a numbers game, diversity. It's a culture game. And it's not a game. It's about, um, we did some very serious workshops at, on site at a couple of agencies on microaggression and cultural appropriation and what have you. And there's really a, a, a limited amount of understanding of why saying this might engender that response in someone else. And so it's difficult, but it exposed a lot. Um, there really has to be, the, we made the conscious decision as an organization, the, the, my fellow board members and I, um, to only work with partners who were serious. We weren't interested in doing one-off diversity um, programming and we weren't then you're just checking a box almost like, checking a box, the box or explaining you're doing window dressing right. and mm -hmm. you know I'm a very straightforward person in terms of calling it like it is in terms of I mean people still say the most outrageous things about the competency of people of color um, there's a presumption that a diverse hire is an indication of a lowering of standards. And it's so profoundly insulting. Absolutely. Um, and so, and I've been profoundly insulted a lot since I took over this oh <laughs> role. Right. Yeah. But fortunately, most of the time, it's doable to turn the moment into something useful. And that's what we try to do. So right now, I think that we want to make sure that the investment in diversity and inclusion and equity uh, remains the same uh, or better and that, um, but we have to see what's going to happen. I, I just don't think that, you know, as much as, as PR and marketing people like to forecast, I think this is one of those situations where we really have a uh, limited ability to do that. Right. Very really hard to predict. Yeah. So Tracy, I can't even believe we're up to the, let's get some advice <laughs> to wrap oh, up the sure. show. Right. It goes quickly. I'm going to use your words. Um, you said, turn this moment into something useful. So Tracy, maybe you can share with the Women Worldwide audience how we can turn this moment into something useful and to do it with better communication. What, what's your advice? Well, one of the things I noticed was that a lot of people, and I had noticed it before Corona took hold of everything, but a lot of women in my life were in a, one, a, one kind of overwhelm or another. And that the reasons for this are horrible, but the moment to stop, was actually beneficial for some people. They needed to, to stop and have a moment to tend to their lives and to tend to themselves. Um, today, we're starting our um, social media uh, post-corona kind of thing. We had a, a, an event scheduled for March 28th, and we started the, the quarter very hopefully with um, Black Public Relations Society. We had a workshop with Patrice Tanaka on oh, um, discovering your um, uh, work, your life and leadership purpose. We thought, okay, let's let people like make the most out of Q1, you know, and then we were going to close Q1 with a celebration of virtuosos, people who uh, have contributed because they're calling and craft you know, combined to make them extraordinary. And so we were really excited about that and what Q2 was going to bring. And then here we are, you know, about 18 days before the event, we saw the writing on the wall and said, mm, we're going to cancel. And so that was hard and difficult and no one knew that it would be at this place where we are. So I say all that to say that I saw that a lot of people were actually relieved to work from home to slow down 
and they may not say it, you know, like, okay, this is a good thing, because it's not. But what you can do is you have to, in any moment, rise to the occasion, right? So to rise to the occasion of this moment can have different meanings for everyone, you know, whether it's learn, hone your skills in one area or, um, you know, you're doing the schooling, you're, you're administering the schoolwork of your child, so then you can really find out what they're learning. And uh, uh, things like that. I don't know. Did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. There's okay. a, a strong message in there. It's to stop and tend. And I think yeah. the worldwide listeners are appreciating that you shared that because we all need to stop and tend. Tracy, last question. Super okay. easy. Where right. can people find out more about you, your work, and the Black Public Relations Society of New York? Sure. Well, my work um, with um, um, Human Impact Solutions, you can find out about it at humanimpactsolutions.com. And, um, you know, we have a, a range of clients uh, and past clients that have included, you know, Ava DuVernay, and we represent the Kellogg Foundation and um, lots of stuff in between. And we have actually just started a, we're in the process of starting a, um, a speaker's bureau for people working on people of color who um, uh, have a lot to say about social justice issues and progressive causes. And then the Black Public Relations Society, um, we are a part of a national organization, but we're an independent affiliate. We're located in New York, um, and our website address is www.b as in black, p as in public, r as in relations, s as in society, and then the word New York spelled out dot com. And um, we will be, um, as we roll out what we've come to, we, we just decided to listen to our members and find out what they needed and take the temperature at a later date. Not We didn't feel we had to rush out with commentary or virtual programming. We felt that what we needed to do was have substance and, and, and really offer something. So we're in the process of rolling that out this week. And um, so our, our new content will be on there uh, today and tomorrow. And um, they can follow us on Instagram, BPRSNY, and on Twitter, BPRSNY, and then we're on Facebook, of course. So um, our membership uh, program is very elastic, and we've come up with some uh, special offerings for this period of time. For instance, members who are currently members who bought their membership this year, it's good through 2021. Good. Because there's no way to predict what right. we're going to be able to do programming this year. Exactly. Um, you know, live programming. So that was our thought. Our student memberships are free. Excellent. The um, currency that's used there is volunteering for an event or writing an essay uh, or something of that nature. So, um, you know, we love working with students and we, Ugh, that's how we, alone. Build, <laughs> yeah, that's how we build a pipeline. And also Terrific. I just generally speaking, my secret weapon all the time is millennial. So. Oh, <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. Tracy, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing where people can find out where you are and all of your advice today. We really appreciate it. Stay thank well. Thank you so much for inviting me on. You too. Stay well. And, um, we, we have to connect soon um, yes. the, on the other side. <laughs> on the other oh. side, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. Uh, our hearts are with you. We're here. Uh, we will continue to share. And please share with us how you're doing, how you're feeling, what you need. You know, best place to find me at Deep Breckenridge on Twitter. You can always email, email me, Deirdre at pureperformancecom with two M's dot com. Okay, friends, stay healthy, be well, and uh, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.